So, hi there everybody, time for me to comment on your comments. I'm sorry, I'm still a little bit hyped after the uh, live stream. I, I normally get fairly hyped when I come out of a live stream. It's fun, it's very uh, dynamic. So, let's see, I think we start with this comment here of For Learn. Sir, could you tell me if it's correct to say a person is discriminated? without against or is the preposition necessary I think you can say this person is discriminated um, I think it's much much more common to say discriminated against but I think it's possible without um, and could you tell me if I can use would have after if if they wouldn't have been d discriminated ha huh. <laughs> so I've heard Americans use this. As a British speaker, I really dislike it. Yeah, if plus would never goes together except for the phrase, if you would help me. Yeah, um, if they wouldn't have been discriminated against. Um, would this be f formal, for instance? <laughs> to me, it's wrong. Yeah, um, but the Americans do it, so... Uh, <laughs> I can't comment comment on that for learn unfortunately yeah for me as an English speaker ouch it's ha if plus would yeah if you would have done this no you can't say that but I hear the Americans say it all the time so I don't know so Count Beauty great to have you in the live stream I like traveling light without any bulky impedimenta and accoutrements I think that's very good English Count Looking at the thumbnail to the video, I was expecting a joke about Russians going to space on trampolines. <laughs> I love it. So next week you'll get a, you'll get another one about uh, Mr. P here. And count sanctioning a country where people are, are used to living in Spartan conditions may have no effect in terms of aggression restraining. <laughs> the majority of the hoi polloi will not notice any difference while they go outside and see their outhouses <laughs> with a heart on the door are all right and talking heads on the TV, TV still rabbiting on about the rotting west. That's very good. Um, thank you for that, Count Beauty. I, I think you're right. So what what he's saying is sanctions are going to affect the poor, but they're not going to affect the uh, the rich at all. And um, yeah, the the uh, middle classes aren't going to suffer. But yeah, and it's not going to have any effect on uh, the. Uh, situation. Thank you for that count. It's good to have your view on things like this. I like to watch evolutionary images where some ancient creatures morph into nowadays animals. Yes, that's very nice. I quite like that as well. Yeah, this um, it slowly changes into something new. And count again. There is a time to put words into someone's mouth and a time to take words out of somebody's mouth. It all depends on the circumstances under which you are. That's very good. Very good English count. And Sean, vine is a kind of plant. I choose wither. Yeah, it's the plant that produces grapes, very definitely. And Domi says wither as well. And VG as well. All the plants withered in hot weather, very definitely. By the way, there's a boss in Minecraft called Wither. If he attacks you, you start withering until you die due to his poisoning. Sounds like a very nasty boss. There are two withering plants on the window. Well, water them quickly. He made a withering and unnecessary comment about her lifestyle. What a wally. <laughs> I love you using the word wally as well. So, Thomas S., great to have you. Thank you for watching. And Manny Braha, hey, I got a little bit confused with some complex English phrases, phrases and I'd love some clarification. Red pout. To be specific, I don't understand how an action noun, if that's the right term, can take an adjective like red, if that makes any sense. 
red pout. Well, to pout, yeah, so I guess a red pout is an aggressive one. I, I guess with the, with these you have to um, th th read between the lines of what red uh, actually means. Or may maybe we've seen a, a red pout from Mr. Putin. Uh, red being the colour of uh, the left or the communists. I'm not sure about this one, uh, um, Manny. A sun disk parted in the centre. So I can't really picture, understand what the sentence is trying to say. So I guess the disk of a sun cut through the middle. Um, so the symbol itself separated in the centre of the room sending out fine thin rays that cradled embraced the person no it's no trouble at all um a sun disc so a disc representing a sun which is parted separated in the center into two bits i guess okay so keep asking manny don't feel don't feel bad about asking uh, on, i recommend you should only feel bad about not asking and Yunas, hi Yunas. English is my second language. A lot of English words are hard to understand for me. I search YouTube, know thee, and in the end I go to your channel to satisfy myself. Many, many thanks. My pleasure, Yunas. And my DT. So, read more. Always. Always thank you for your informative tutorial. Your videos are very helpful. Could you make a video about the following words? Designation, designate and conquer. Designation, designate and conquer. So let's do conquer first. To conquer means to beat, to be victorious. So um, Julius Caesar conquered Britain. Yeah, um, to conquer, to take by invasion. Miss the uh, Russia is trying to conquer the Ukraine. Yeah, um, to conquer, to be victorious over. I guess you could use it metaphorically. Um, you need to conquer your fear. You need to find victory over your fear. And to designate. Okay, this is for you, and this is for you, and this is for you. I'm designating different things for p different people. Or maybe um, uh, I'm in charge of a group of postmen, and I designate, I choose, I say, I define which route each person is going to take. So this uh, this route is your designation. It's what's been designated to you. It's been what has been you, what uh, has been put aside or allotted for you to do. Um, I will look at these and think about making videos of them. And Seema Sohail, great to have you Seema, wither on the vine, grapes are the fruit of the vine and must be picked without the up, must be picked, you pick something up from the floor but you pick a fruit, you break it from the plant, if not picked in time they will dry, shrivel and wither. And Manji says beautiful sentence Seema, thank you Seema. And me too. Before going to the classroom, a teacher may, must make sure to carry the required in teaching impedimenta to achieve productive outcomes from their lesson. Because at no point have you designated the sex, so use their from their lessons. Yeah, let there. So it's we're not saying he or she. It it makes it more politically correct and better as well. I learn a new phrase. Ramp up. Thanks. So oh, great to have you, HN. <laughs> and thank you. That's my ple my pleasure for learn. Keep asking questions. It's quite an interesting word. Ha. Huh. Okay, Wally. Yes. You'll probably find though, VG, the Americans are not going to understand it. Yeah? Okay, hi. I wish I, I wish I could uh, uh decipher your name. You mentioned stumbled on a mistake. 
Yeah, but does that mean we always use on with the verb to stumble? You could, when talking about making a mistake, to the stumble on, the on means to find by accident. You could stumble over something. He stumbled over question six. He made a mistake on it. To stumble on is to find suddenly by chance or by accident to happen on, to happen across. I stumbled on a friend while I was in town. Um, for example, when I looked up the book on Google, there was an example I stumbled over the word. Yeah, you could stumble over a word as well. Yeah, I stumbled over this. I found it. I found it by accident. Stumble on, stumble over. These work well together. So basically, I want to know what preposition should I use with stumble. Find by chance to stumble on, to stumble over. Yeah, um, to happen upon. Yeah, to come across, to find by chance. So, both of them, my friend. Ah, Nora. Forever grateful, dearest teacher. Lovely to have you here. By the way, I passed my second TP2 in the CELTA course with flying colours. I'm not surprised. I know your English is good. Forever grateful, dearest teacher. Great to have you, Nora. Keep going. You're going to do, you're going to get a great result at the end of your CELTA. I'm certain of it. And Manji says wither, which is the right answer. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> 2.29. I'd like to get at least two hours sleep before the evening live stream. I'm so tired. Yes, yeah, so to be supine for a couple of hours. Okay, I, I hope you get to sleep. It was great to see you. You did come to the live stream and it was wonderful to have you, P. And Ronan says, great. Yes, it w I'm fortuitous to have people like you. So 107. I think we're at about 106, 700. So four days? Yeah, I would, I would guess four days from now. Vibes. Is protest the verb pronounced with a schwa? Protest. 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 So, ha. Huh. A protest, but to protest, to protest, to protest. I think to protest as a verb, but a protest. So the, the noun without it, ha, huh, to protest, to protest. I would like to protest. You can if you stress it, vibes. I heard it pronounced with the second syllable stressed, and the first is schwa, but can it be un the unstressed diphthong, then, and then stress, to protest, to protest, to protest or to protest. Okay, um, let's see. Most commonly, unstressed, protest, to protest, but a protest. I would like to protest. That you could do, protest. No, I can't uh, unstress to, I would like to protest. I would like to protest. Now I'm still putting stress on the second one. Okay. So, Mohammed Omar, lovely to see you, Mr. Music. I think that the biggest impedimenta that the Russian army will face in Ukraine is the weather and the muddy ground in the spring. We will see. Thank you, Mohammed. Good English. What's the difference? Impedimenta and obstacles. So normally an obstacle is something that is in your way. But the impedimenta are normally the things that you are carrying. It's all your equipment. Yeah. Whereas um, an obstacle could be something somebody else has put there. Yeah, people put obstacles in your way and then you have to carry your impedimenta over the obstacles, yeah? Okay, impedimenta, baggage. P, hi Patricia, like anything. Cuckoo, Alex, please reassure me. My friend will be here next month and I'm worried like anything because I don't want to disappoint her. What if she doesn't find me elegant? What if her daughter finds me dowdy? That I dress like a clodhopper, mummy's expression. 
What if it rains, if there's a strike, if someone takes it into his head to throw himself in front of the subway and cause unending delays? As we've been friends ever since we were eight, we are going to make up for lost years and have adolescent fun, like nobody's business. Just be yourself, P, yeah? If she doesn't like something, it's her problem. It's not something you've done wrong. Yeah, this is the problem with being brought up by narcissists. You end up with a very low self-esteem. You're a perfectly reasonable person. If you act reasonably, then she has to be happy with it. Yeah? And if she doesn't like it, it's her problem. Mohammed Omar. In order to live now in this material world, you must make uh, an account to the difficult days and you should be very Spartan. So you must take account of the difficult days and you should be very Spartan. That's good. Thank you, Mohammed. Hi, Patricia. Cuckoo. Cuckoo, Patricia. And Ossie Tal. Thanks. Thank you for watching. No problem, Ossie. It's really nice to have you. Thank you for being so faithful. And Ilitero. Ilitero. Hi, Ilitero. Not sure if it's a regional thing, but of my understanding, from my understanding, that second definition is commonly referred to as scarf, as in, dude, scarfed all the tacos, bro. <laughs> I mean, not unless it's a misnomer or whatever of the word scoff, and I would not be surprised if it was. It could very well be he scarfed, he scarfed all, all the, ta the, the tacos, man. He scarfed them all. Um, I'm not sure. Sorry for the example. I had to make, to make poke fun. I had to poke fun at my culture in pointing out the word for my country. <laughs> it's very good. Yeah, he scarfed them all. Very definitely. I love it, Illitero. And Mohammed, skulking around to save face is such a common behavior, is so common. Such a common behaviour, or so common. Okay. And Nigel Bishop. Hi, Nigel. A homeless man living in a park near my house trundles around with several bags of impedimenta. Great sentence, Nigel. Great to see you. Patricia. Hi, Alex. I slept a little, and I gladly stay in bed much longer, but I'd better keep busy till nine or ten at least. I like your choice of examples. You know how to make your stuff interesting, succinct and relevant. I wish I'd discovered your channel long ago. So do I. Better late than never, I suppose. Much obliged. My pleasure. I love the way everybody's using this much obliged. It sounds so British and it's so elegant. <laughs> OK, yes, I love this blue. Blue and white with some black. That's a lovely colour scheme. And Maria Mickenen. Hi, Maria. Wither. Very definitely. <laughs> and Fran. Hi, Fran. I hope you're okay today. If they cut my internet, they will put the kibosh. A kibosh on. Most normally we say the. We will put the kibosh on my learning. Very good. Okay. That's That was in today's live stream. And 40 Love. Great to see you, 40. So distended, to swell up, typically because of pressure from inside, primarily medical for body organs. A very distended stomach is sometimes visible, as in the uh, thumbnail. The ascending aorta was enlarged and distended to magnify, blow out of proportion, metaphorically. The press are distending the dimensions of the scandal to stretch out in all directions. The sun distended upon me in the desert. Distend, multiple directions. X extend, one dimension. Formality, 7.5. That's great, 40 love. Thank you. And Fran, great to see you again. We had a tentative plan, but we had to postpone it due to the rain. It's true that people ask you tentatively when some... Something regarding your health happens to you. Good English, Fran. I love it. Yeah, tentative, carefully. And Fran, as it were. Huh. 
your explanations are out of this world, so to speak. I love that, so to speak. Yes, you're saying by that you're saying it's a a metaphor. That's very good. Hi, Big Ricardo. Great to have you. Perfidious for learn. Antonym could be stalwart, maybe. Yes, I think that's very good. Somebody who's stalwart. The opposite of perfidious. And Asimula, great to have you, high respected teacher. Great to have you, Asimula. And let's see. Forty love, high forty. Hilt, the handle of a knife. The hilt consists of the guard, the handle, and the pommel, the knob on the end to the hilt as much as possible completely fully to the maximum limit formality 4.5 i will support you to the hilt the house is mortgaged to the hilt the company is borrowed to the hilt the actor played the role to the hilt his glass was filled to the hilt he was up to the hilt in debt we're already being taxed to the hilt very good indeed, Forty Love. And Francisco, Fran, eschew. I guess people will try to eschew products from Russia, but no idea if it's if it's double, maybe petrol, gas, or essential things come from. If it's doable, if it's doable, that's it. That's right. If it's doable, I love it. Yeah, maybe petrol, gas, or essential things come from Russia. Yeah, they're talking about trying to make us independent of uh, Russian pe uh, uh, oil and gas. But I think that's going to be easier said than done. And the lovely Manji. Hi, Manji. Great to have you in the stream. A great many instances are there in history where kings are betrayed by their perfidious brothers. The Mughal em Emperor Selim perfidiously banished his brother and seized the throne. Lovely. I love this. A great many instances are there. I love this inversion. Yeah? Yeah, there are a great many instances. You fronted it and then made an inversion. That's a very, very nice piece of grammar. Thank you, Manji. Juggernaut. Massive destruction. Thank you, Azimullah. And, hmm, okay, Count Beauty, soldiers of fortune are perfidious. You just have to offer them more money than your foe. Absolutely, yeah, mercenaries, we very often call them as well. A truck, hmm, I'm not sure of the reference, but very probably. So, did you check no ED, Luke, my segue comment on YouTube? Great to see you, Luke. Candy Twiggy Twist, a while since I've seen you. Great to have your have you back. Huh. I love I like your political point of view. You smuggle here and there. <laughs> Thank you, Candy. And VG, my mum always takes some extra and unnecessary impedimenta on her trips. You should see the list of impedimenta that uh, Patricia wants to take with her. OK, before we start our journey, make sure you put all your impedimenta in the boot. Yes, the Americans would say trunk, but I would say the boot of the car. And 40 love, ditto. Used most commonly in informal speaking to say that they are the same in the same way. Likewise, so do I. John says, I don't like hot food. And I could say ditto. I don't like hot food. The house next door was occupied by squatters, and the house next to that, ditto, exactly. If one crosses his arms, then the other, ditto, good. Ditto mark, a symbol using to indicate the item is being repeated. Formality 5, duplicate. Could you give me a ditto of that document? Formality 4.5. Very good indeed, 40 love. And, ha, VG, much obliged. Thank you. Great to see you, David E. Schnell. Yeah, that's wonderful to have you talking to VG. And, VG, that the perfidious man stole all of our impedimenta, and since we don't have any photos of him, he couldn't be recognised by the police. That's why he hasn't been caught yet. Ha, good English. He was a very perfidious man, and though he has changed, many people still don't trust him. Lovely. 
Jack is perfidious and will deceive even his best friend if it puts him at an advantage. I like this, puts him at an advantage. Good preposition use. He perfidiously tried to sell me a stolen watch, but I was cleverer and reported him to the police. The police are looking into, investigating, a perfidious scheme that they have been told about anonymously. Yeah? Okay. What's the joke that goes like that about look into? Yes, um, there was a, um, a huge hole in the wall and the police are looking into it. Bad pun. VG, people were getting nervous as the conversation turned to the perfidious question of appearance money. Very good, VG. The money you pay a, someone important just to turn up. VG, to me, loving someone who happens to be perfidious and or acts perfidiously simply doesn't pay off. Yep, in the long term, it's a problem. So, thank you for watching. I, I'm much happier now I've been allowed to comment. Me too, VG. And ruffian, 40, 40 again. A hooligan, a yobbo, a scoundrel, a bully. Something, someone who is not very nice. Someone involved in crime, a violent person. Normally talking about a man. We were talking at a bar and sudden, suddenly a couple of ruffians came into the room and started making trouble. Formality 6.5. Old-fashioned word. Sounds posh. Good work, 40. And thanks for answering my sign or signal question. The two words are very, very, very close. Ha. <laughs> okay. So, be careful of that. They're not easy. Posh literary vocabulary is spelt wrong in the title, so... Ruffian. I would swap that later. Thank you, Forty. I will change that. Also, what's the difference between warning and notice? OK, uh, let's see. A warning says you've done something wrong and if you do it again, you're going to be severely punished. Um, you c a warning could be given by official notice, yeah, but notice just says to notify someone. So, for example, um, if you leave your job, you hand in your notice to give somebody notice, to tell them about something, to inform them. But it may be a warning, but it may just be something else as well. And, huh. I didn't know bees pooped. Yes, they definitely do. And thanks, sir and AK, for answering my question on shenanigans. Yes, um, bad behaviour, something illegal, immoral. Any time. My pleasure, VG2. Mohamed al Bunaga, sceptical, untrustworthy, the one who usually moves their lips, trying to pull the wool over their eyes over people's eyes or trick them into thinking in a certain way perfidious it's a good definition i love it untrustworthy you need to be skeptical about them and sydney ausbury hi sydney romans 10 9 if you declare with your mouth jesus is lord and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you will be saved accept jesus into your life today he's loving and caring and everything you need in this life he loves you unconditionally open up matthew mark luke and john in your bible and read about him um okay well thank you for sharing this i will let the rest of you read this if that if that's what you want um to wither on the vine high static that's absolutely right well done static 40 love an act of bravery bravado particularly when trying to impress or intimidate somebody with a great show of bravado she shouted at the lion as an act of bravado notice this one directly from spanish bravado yeah same meaning and Adam ZS, hi there in Poland, Adam. He's being so perfidious, puts me off him. That's a great sen. Oh, so he's, I thought you'd said his. His being so perfidious, 
or he being so perfidious puts me off. He's being so perfidious, it puts me off, off him. I've given him a wide berth for quite a while. Okay, great, Adam. And 40. Baited breath. If you wait for something with bated breath, it means you're anxious about a situation. You really want to know the results. I was waiting for the results with bated breath. I was waiting with bated breath for Alex's next video. Not the next Alex's video. For Alex's next video. Formality 6. Thank you, 40 love. And Adam again. Yes, his being perfidious. That was what I thought. I thought you were going to write, you'd written in the first one. His being perfidious. I really like that. Oversteps transcends the boundaries of decency. It sticks out a mile and it's self-evident. That is very good English indeed, Adam. I like that. I think you are definitely making progress. So, while we're waiting for this to refresh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a rating, subscribe to my channel, and let's see what else there is. Okay, we've got quite a few here, definitely. And, wow, there are lots of them. Ha, and lots and lots. Ha, wow, where do we, where do we go to? My gosh. Ah, I'm still looking. Yes, his being from Adam. 40 Love. There's a song by Sarah Barre, King of Anything, where she sings, Who died and made you King of Anything? Good. Who made you, who died and made you boss? Sometimes the read more button refuses to work. Yes, I've seen it on a couple of occasions, particularly with yours. But this is YouTube's problems. So, Holly Pietrzak. So, at liberty, at liberty to do. This means it's none of your business what another person does. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're at li they're at liberty to do what they want. It's none of your business what they do. Exactly, Holly. Okay, no problem answering your question on, on mention and friends. And right and downright. And road and its friends. And the baking question. Lost the chat before embrace. Sorry, sorry, Alex. No problem. You can still you can look at the rest of it in the video if you want. So it was really lovely to have you in the live stream, P. And P says, Bonsoir et Charles Henri. I lost the chat before embrace. So thanks for the stream, sir. Thanks for coming, VG. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, and you too, and the same to everyone else out there. Bonsoir, Alex. Bad luck on the live chat. Had even tried to get out of the flat. Just bad luck, I suppose. Well, we had you for a bit there, definitely. And, sir, can you explain the difference between on top of and at the top of? Normally you put something on top. It is on top. It is at the top, at the top of the mountain, on the top of the mountain. I don't think there's any difference. Yeah, I think I would most normally put something on the top and if something is located at the top. But I don't think there's any real difference in meaning. And to me, living on or near to steep hills isn't safe at all also near, near to in some places. So yeah, also living on or near steep hills, living near to steep hills, definitely. We could steep some metals to make organic fertilizer for our garden. Yes, it also um, uh, reduces insects, particularly aphids. And 40 love. To walk in a slow and relaxed way, you amble when you are not in a hurry. He ambled along the road, looking at everything on the way. Formality 6, but can be used in an informal conversation. Great to see you, 40. You've, you've had quite a binge today. And... VG, to make the tea, steep it in the pot while the water is boiling. Wait for 10 minutes and then you can drink it. You can put some sugar if you want it sweet. Yeah, to steep. 
good. And Catherine Positano, perfidious, love this word, the perfidious pastor. I love this word as well, perfidious Albion. Uh, I'm quite proud to be from perfidious Albion. Okay, VG. On rainy days, avoid driving on this avenue because it usually gets steeped by the rain. Yeah. And would you mind telling me the difference between boil and simmer? In my language, we don't make a distinction between these two words, which makes me confused. This is a very good question. I, I actually think I'm, I, I'm, I made a video about simmer. Um, let's see. To simmer is to boil very slowly, yeah? Um, to simmer, you just keep it boiling, bloop, bloop, bloop. And to boil has the idea of something faster. But at the end of the day, water boils at 100 degrees. So there's no difference, there's just lots of movement, yeah? Um, in my opinion, so, to simmer is to boil gently. To boil is just a more general word. Okay, maw. This is a great word. The mouth of a fierce or frightening animal. The maw of the shark. He put his head in the lion's maw. Something that looks like it's going to surround and absorb everything around, metaphorically. Formality 6.5. I really wor wor worry this will be swallowed by the maw of bureaucracy. Mouth, informal, shut your maw, large opening, mouth of a person with an insatiable appetite, informal, 4.5. Very good, very good love, 40 love. So, VG, should I leave these clothes to steep in these bucket, this bucket of bleach? B-L-E-A-C-H, but yes, that's good English, well done. It'll probably just disintegrate if you leave it too long. And is there any difference? Josh put the dirty shirt in the water and left it to steep for nearly one hour. Josh put the dirty sheet in the water and let it steep for nearly one hour. Left it to steep, let it steep. Exactly the same. I let the tea steep in hot water for ten minutes before drinking it. Fine. And Patricia. Supine. Why the police, the landlord, and the shrinks remain supine on this matter, the neighbour issue, is beyond me, <laughs> is beyond every sane man's ken. Oh, I love this. Every sane, not mad, person's ken knowledge. That's a really good one. Well, I hope something happens and you are liberated from this, uh, na this neighbour from hell. And forty love, pleasing to the ear, melodious, a dulcet voice, soothing, agreeable, very pleasant, the dulcet atmosphere in the house, the dulcet weather of late summer, dulcet tones, formality seven, sounds very literary, definitely. VG, I'm never going to be steeped in the stupid ideas of those mischievous teenagers. It works. Bonsoir, Alexandre. Good evening, Patricia. Great to have you. A thousand reals is quite steep, expensive for a two gigabyte RAM mobile phone nowadays. OK, good use of steep. The house I was talking about is located near a steep path by the field. Good, good English. I'll never pay for something stupid that has such a steep price. Good English again. And based on that, we're going to have half a dozen more as well, aren't we? So let's see. So you're definitely in, into steep. That's very good. And... Okay. Ah. So, wow, we're still going, aren't we? Uh, yes. We've got some aluminium tins in the storehouse if you need them. Yeah, the Americans say aluminum, but aluminium. So, who's been sleeping with my secretary? I didn't get this one. Maybe I'm in a bad mood after the live stream today. Here's another. Mary had a little sheep 
with the sheep she went to sleep. The sheep turned out to be a ram. Mary had a little lamb. Very good, I love it. It's playing with Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow. That's really good, P. I love it. And 40 love. Perfidious, untrustworthy, treacherous. Perfidious Albion, treachery in international relations, particularly by the Brits. He perfidiously stabbed me in the back. His perfidiousness means you should not trust him under any circumstances. Formality, 7.5. Great 40 love. We all need women that are not perfidious. Good work, Mannequin. My long-time friend is perf perfidious. Well done, Mannequin. No mistakes. And... I don't like the word aluminum. I prefer to say aluminium. It's much better to my ears. Well, in Portuguese, definitely aluminum. So I guess in Brasileiro as well. And electricians always keep their impedimenta with them. Responsible people have their impedimenta. I have my impedimenta in a book bag. Good English. And thanks for the hearts. Well, here's one more. And let's just re re refresh and see what see what happens. Maybe there's one or two more. We'll see. You better be careful, VG, or they're gonna say no more comments to you again. And wow, here we go. What's the difference between a flask, a flagon with a G, a vial and a file? So a flask. I, to me, a flask, I think of a hip flask, one of these metal bottles that you keep in your pocket. Yeah, a thermos flask. Um, a flagon. Well, if this is an old word, a flagon. To me, is a, is a, a big container with a handle, a flagon of wine. A vial. A vial is quite small. It's small and made of glass. A vial of perfume. And I think a file and a vial, they're the same. And raise, lift, lift up, hoist, elevate and erect. So to raise, to raise something, to make it higher. To lift, yeah, to lift probably from the ground. Lift up. The up is just adding emphasis. Yeah, I think if you lift something, it's on a surface and you lift it from that surface. You lift it up. Whereas if you raise something, it may not be on a surface. It may already be hanging and you raise it. To hoist, well firstly to hoist, normally you have a pulley system and a rope and you pull the rope and it hoists the thing. But you can also use hoist to lift. Hoist! I think if you hoist something also, it indicates that it's quite heavy. Whereas lift, lift up and raise doesn't say anything about the weight. To elevate, to elevate is to put in a higher position. He was elevated to uh, the peerage, to put higher, and then to erect. Well, maybe something's lying down and you erect it, or you erect a tent, you put it together, you put the pieces together, yeah? Um, so to erect, it's either lying over and you erect it, you put it up again, you put it upright. And let's have another look, let's see if we've got more from VG. Be careful, they're going to ban you again, VG. And let's see. Okay, so. <laughs> Row, quarrel, fight, argument, disagreement. Synonyms depending on context. So, a row and a quarrel. I think a row is probably more temporary. A quarrel, it might be temporary, but it might be longer lasting. A fight can be verbal, but it can also be physical. An argument. Yes, I think this is less than the row. They, we had an argument, we had a row. But these are people saying, oh yes, I did. No, no, you didn't. And disagreement. I think a disagreement, yes, is um, a euphemism or a 
polite way to say an argument. We had a disagreement about the price. We had an argument about the price. We had a row, shouting about the fight. There was a quarrel about the fight, uh, about the price, and it went on for ages. And then finally we had a fight about it, but maybe just a verbal one as well. And let's give this one more go. And see. I bet VG's got another one. Yeah. Let's see what we've got. Okay, that's it. So, wonderful seeing you all. Thank you all for coming to the live stream. And uh, take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.